Well guys, I'm pretty excited because this is a brand new bandsaw. If you've been watching my channel for any time, you'll notice in a few of my videos I comment about, oh, I really need to fix up my bandsaw. Well, this cast iron monster right behind me is the bandsaw that I was planning to fix up. However, when I went to start pricing out what it would take to fix it up and I found a few additional problems with it, I decided just to go get a new bandsaw and not mess with it. So here it is. I've chosen the Rikon 10-326. I'm going to get it out and I'm going to unbox it and maybe do a quick review on it. As it turns out, the saw is much heavier than it looks, so get help to move it if you can. Ah, I finally found it. The gross weight, 293 pounds. So this is nice. The whole thing is packaged in form-fitting foam. So no matter how much you rattle this when you're moving it around or pull on those straps, should protect your bandsaw. Isn't that for a table saw? This box was inside the bigger box, so I'll open this too. Yep, look at that. Nice blue stand. And all you get is a picture for assembling a wheel kit. Luckily it looks pretty simple. The protective oil on the table needs to be removed. I replaced it with a coat of paste wax. Just put it on, wait a few minutes, then buff it out. It works great. On the back of the unit there's a 4 inch dust port, so I'm going to attach an adapter that I can then use to hook into my system. This is the Rockler Dust Right Extraction System. There are a few things I'd like to point out on the fence on this saw. Notice that there's one nylon pad on the bottom side of the aluminum piece of the fence. So if I have my fence, I can install it on the carrier, and that nylon pad at the end is supporting it. You can see I have a nice even gap all the way down, and I can slide it back and forth. It won't mar it. Everything is off the table except for that pad. The downside of that, if you're going to use the fence on this side of the blade, you need to unscrew this pad and move it down there. Otherwise, you're not going to be sitting level and you're going to scratch your table. So I'm actually going to put the fence on that side of the blade right now. Conveniently, Rikon has tool storage right on the saw, so the Allen wrench I need to move this nylon pad is right there. And the one nice thing about being able to put the fence on this side of the saw is if I tilt the table, which isn't super smooth, but it works pretty good, this fence is rigid, so I can let the material ride on the fence and I can push it through while the saw supports the material. Pretty slick. So now I've got everything adjusted just like it says in the manual, and we're going to try it out. So maybe you heard that ticking, that ch 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 as it's going around. I, I think that's because this blade was shipped on the saw. It's probably got a little bit of memory from where those wheels are at. I'm going to try putting a new blade in it. The blade I'm putting on is a brand new quarter inch Timberwolf blade and it should be a pretty high quality blade. Well I just found something a little goofy. This saw has a blade tension indicator and right now I'm not quite at quarter inch blade. I need to detension it more but uh, clearly that's not enough tension. This blade tension indicator has got to not be right, and I know in the manual there are directions for how to adjust it, so I'll have to adjust it. Right, so now I've got the blade tracking correctly. I have the blade guides out so that they aren't touching. Let me just try this. Alright, well I have the belt on the motor adjusted pretty loosely. I'm going to tighten that belt up just a little bit. And that's real easy. With this handle I can just adjust that idler pulley put a little extra tension on that drive belt. Alright, let's try that again. Oh, that fixed it. Oh man, that's much better. I have a little bit of a problem trying to set the guards with this quarter inch blade. You can see this handy window, I have the blade set just forward to center of the wheel. That's the way I was taught to do it, to keep the teeth off the wheel. 
I was able to adjust the top bearing guide just fine. However, the underside here, it's into the guard by about an eighth of an inch, and I can't get the wheel against it. So I'm going to have to compensate by setting the tracking of the blade further back. Well, I finally got this blade tracking right. If I put pressure on it, it turns the bearing. And when I don't put pressure on it, it doesn't turn the bearing. However, I find this completely unacceptable because though I have it approximately centered on the bottom wheel, the top wheel is at the very, very back edge. I don't want to run it that way. Well, I studied the manual a little bit more, and it does tell you what to do in the troubleshooting section if the wheels are not coplanar. Specifically, it even tells you what to do if the lower wheel is tracking forward of the upper wheel, which is the condition I have. Uh, so it says in the manual that this adjustment is set at the factory, and they really don't want you messing with it too much. But in my case, I clearly have wheels that are not coplanar. Sorry, Rikon, it just didn't come to me correct. So. What you're supposed to do is, number one, detension the blade. Number two, you unlock the nine o'clock bolt. So I'm just gonna unscrew it a little bit. Uh, what happens is this shaft, it's kind of a, a cantilever situation where you're, you're playing teeter-totter with it. As I move these bolts up and down, it's moving the wheel on the other side. And it says to take the adjustment very slow, and you move these bolts one half rotation at a time. So I need to move this top bolt one half rotation up, and this bottom bolt one half rotation up, and that should shift my whole wheel a little bit more in the proper direction. After that first adjustment, I actually have it where I've gone a little too far. The top one is in the center of the wheel, the bottom one is behind center now. So I went too far, I gotta go back. Okay, after the second adjustment, I again have the blade centered on the top wheel, and if I come to the bottom wheel, I am just a hair behind center. So I'm going to go like an eighth of a turn. I want perfection. Sorry guys, I had a brain fart. I went the wrong way. Just gotta go back. Alas, I finally have the blade centered at the top and centered on the bottom wheel. It took me quite a few iterations, I would say about eight or nine, but I finally got it. I'm gonna cut into a two by four, first cut. Let's see how it goes. First. Oh, that's very smooth now. Dust collection. I dare say, I'm impressed. That cut was for you. No, really. That was an excellent cut. It was so smooth. It, it was like a laser cutting. That was amazing. Let's do some more. To test the dust collection capability, I cut that 2x4 into thin strips. Also notice here how I have the fence positioned to reach under the blade guard. A very cool feature. It cut those strips like they were butter. But there is quite a bit of dust hanging out here on the table and also down here on the cabinet. Let's have a look inside. Yeah, pretty good. It looks like quite a bit of it went into the dust port. Just a little bit on the shelf there. Well, I've reinstalled the original three-quarter inch blade that came on it, and I'm pleased to see that it's tracking centered on both wheels. So that coplanar adjustment I did wasn't just because of the blade. Now, if you remember when I ran this blade before, it had like a tink, tink, tink sound as it went around. That's the weld in the blade, and it's hitting the bearings when it comes around. So I have here a diamond sharpening credit card. And I'm just going to run the saw while I hold this on the back side of the blade to just take that weld off. Guess what you don't hear anymore? No tink, 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 tink. Yeah, so this is the weld on the blade, and now you can hardly see it. Next, I'm testing the resaw capability of this saw by running this 1x8 oak against the fence. Hey, look at that. Wow, that's a remarkable finish for a resaw. I'm actually pretty surprised by that. 
So again, that cut like butter. That, that was awesome. The saw has plenty of power. Again, let's check out how much sawdust is around. A little bit here on the table. Cabinet is pretty clean. It looks like it's taken most of it. By the way, folks, one thing I've done, because this tension lever, you can't tell when it's on or off, is I stuck this big red level on it. Whenever I detension the blade, I stick this level on it. That way, if I want to cut, tension it up, if I'm done, detension it, stick the level on it. This is a great indicator. When I walk up to the saw, I can immediately recognize, oh yeah, I got to tension the blade. Now let me give you my brief conclusions on the saw. Overall, I did a lot of research before I bought it, and I still maintain that it's one of the best band saws on the market. I think the ball bearing guides are far superior to the friction type that wear out, and the fact that they're toolless is pretty neat. The fence, despite my complaints about some of the nuances, I think the fence is also one of its best features with this large capacity, big fence. You can put it on either side of the blade. Uh, I do wish that the tension lever was more visible. Uh, also, the fact that the storage door opens up and hits the wheels on the wheel kit, that's messed up, and Raycon should do something about that. Um, also, I had to adjust the wheels to be coplanar. But the manual was actually had pretty clear instructions on how to do that, so that really wasn't too bad. I think it's one of the best band saws for its capacity, its smooth runningness, its weight. Yeah, it just feels like a quality machine. And uh, I'm excited to have it here in my workshop, so stay tuned for lots of good projects coming up using this machine.